Aloha everyone. My name is Charles and this is the Hawaii Volcano Watch Report. In this update report, we are going to talk about the water sample taken from the Halimaumau Crater Lake. The sample results became publicly available on November 15th, 2019. I know I am a little late with this update, but things have been a little bit busy for me this last week, so I do apologize for the delay. However, with no further delay, I will get right to the update. The discovery of the Crater Lake was on July 25th, 2019 and has been continuously growing since then. This growth is about one meter or one yard per week since it was first spotted. It was October 26th that a UAS or drone obtained a water sample from the Crater Lake. The drone collected 750 milliliters or 25 ounces of water successfully from the lake. Preliminary testing of the sample at the crater rim shows a pH of 4.2. This is similar to fruit juice. The sample was tested in depth at the USGS laboratories located at the California Volcano Observatory on the mainland. Data from extensive testing show the following results. As expected, there are high concentrations of sulfate ions in the water, approximately 53,000 milligrams per liter. It would appear the influx of new water is dissolving SO2 emitted by the underground magma as the water enters the lake. The pH of the water has been confirmed to be 4.2, which puts this crater lake pH in the uncommon middle range. Most volcanic lakes tend to have a pH of less than 3.5 or higher than 5.0. The magnesium to sodium and sodium to potassium ratios in the crater water appear similar to the Kilauea basalt rock ratios as well. This similarity seems to be indicating a chemical reaction is occurring between the older rocks and the crater water. The concentrations of calcium in the water are not very high. That would indicate the calcium is combining with sulfate ions to form solidified minerals. These minerals are then precipitating from the crater water. I wonder if this is the mechanism responsible for what I believe to be a thin film of some kind on the water surface. I talked about that in the previous Hawaii Volcano Watch Report video. Now iron should also be chemically reacting to form various minerals as well. That could be a contributing factor to the crater lake's yellowish colors. In a different previous Hawaii Volcano Watch Report, I flew over the crater lake in person and gathered video and high resolution photographs. Once I completed my independent analysis of that imagery, USGS information, and other available sources, I changed my opinion on what was the major contributor of water to the lake. The data suggested to me it was more rainwater than groundwater from the Keller well. Testing of the water sample collected by the USGS shows the hydrogen and oxygen that form the water molecules match the rainwater. The water migrates to the ground subsurface where it absorbs SO2 as it diffuses through the rocks which makes the water more acidic. That creates favorable conditions for chemical reactions to occur as the water travels down to the bottom of the crater pit. It is truly a fascinating process to be able to witness in real time. What makes this something unique to see, this is the first time in the written history of such a lake forming in the Halimaumau crater. Not surprisingly, this has gathered local and global interest. Your viewing of this video is a testament to that fact. That concludes the report on the analysis of the water sample. In the second part of this report, I am going to answer some of the most asked questions I have encountered about the Crater Lake. I think this first question is the most asked question I see in the comments across multiple platforms. How big is the lake now? Of course, since the lake continues to grow, that answer changes weekly. 
as of November 20th, 2019, the latest size report I have seen indicates it is approximately 220 feet by 480 feet or 67 meters by 146 meters in size. That leads us to this next question. How deep will the lake become before it stops growing? That is a question that I was curious about myself. According to USGS, the crater lake may rise another 180 feet to 210 feet or 55 meters to 64 meters before it equalizes with surrounding groundwater. How hot is the water in the crater lake? The thermal camera used by the USGS to monitor the temperature indicates the surface temperature to be around 158 degrees Fahrenheit or 70 degrees Celsius. It appears the water surface temperature is relatively stable and not fluctuating very much. Any rise or fall in the warmth of the water could indicate rising or falling magma in the reservoir below. This next question is one I have seen asked numerous times across social media, though it doesn't seem to get any serious answer. What happens if the lava returns to the crater? Will there be an explosive eruption? This question isn't as simple to answer as you might think. Though to be transparent, yes, there could be an explosive eruption. However, there is a multitude of different factors at play, and based on the dominance of any one of them, it could determine how the eruption would progress. The primary factor, I think, that would be in play is how fast the magma rises to the surface. If it is fast, then it could cause the bottom of the lake to collapse down into the rising magma. The rapid introduction of the water to the magma would cause a significant steam explosion to occur. On the opposite side, slowly rising magma would potentially allow the water to boil off preceding the magma's arrival. Therefore, no steam explosion before the surfacing of the magma. It is also possible that a significant earthquake or unusual land movement in or around the crater could create a direct pathway to the magma reservoir, allowing the lake to drain into the magma chamber quickly. If that happens, there should be a steam explosion of considerable significance to follow shortly after that. Another plausibility is magma could find a way to the surface outside of the lake's perimeter, such as from the crater walls or rim. In this case, if lava was to migrate into the lake, it should just boil off with localized minor steam explosions, like what occurred in 2018 when lava entered Green Lake at Kapoho. One more scenario could be if magma finds a new path to the surface outside of the crater, such as what happened in 1959 when Kilauea Iki erupted and then shortly later in 1960 when lava erupted at the end of the Lower East Rift Zone in Kapoho. One thing I think we can all be sure of is this volcano is full of unbelievable surprises. We can only truly make educated speculations as to what might develop next. If you are new to this channel, you might be asking yourself, how do I get notifications of new updates when they are available? You can click the subscribe button, then the bell icon, and select all notifications. You might also be asking where can you get more content from Doing Hawaii? For that, head over to the Facebook page and Instagram page. Links to those are in the description below. Now I have a few questions for you. Do you like this type of content? If so, smash that like button to let me know. Also, what do you think the future might hold for the Kilauea Volcano? Tell us what you think down in the comments. That concludes this edition of the Hawaii Volcano Watch Report. Mahalo for watching and have a phenomenal morning, afternoon, 
or evening.